What is going on, everybody? I'm Rob Westerman of GVP Daily. Joining me today are some special guests, the one and only Jerry Kramer and his son and daughter, Daniel and Diana. A huge thank you to you guys for coming on. Uh, Diana, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Of course, Daniel, how's it going? Hey, baby, it's Victory Monday. How do you think it's going? It's going <laughs> fantastic. Uh, Jerry, how's it going? How's your Victory Monday? I am pretty comfortable today. I I'm, can't wait to see who we uh, draw in the playoffs and the final path, you know. But uh, Aaron and the team is looking good, and Devontae is back healthy, and uh, he, what a sensational ball player he is. He really and, is. And they've just done a wonderful job. So 13 and 3, we're going to be for the third year in a row. Yes, sir. Uh, I suspect. So I'm very comfortable with where we are as am i perfect uh i wanted to have you guys on and talk a little packers football and also highlight something pretty cool that i came across on the internet the other day you guys have a cd set called inside the locker room a photo book as well uh which captures perhaps the greatest season of the greatest dynasty in nfl history 1967 was a crazy year obviously with the packers looking for a third consecutive nfl championship there it is right there um in this set that daniel's holding up You'll hear from Coach Lombardi, Bart Starr, Ray Nitschke, among others. Um, Diana, how did you guys come up with this idea? And if you could just walk us through how this came about. Well, interestingly enough, Dad <laughs> loves to save everything. And he was, correct me, Papa, if I'm wrong, but he was going through his garage and had all these old, his tapes, you know, from yep. – uh, from that season, his actual tapes. And he's like, oh, I guess I should just throw those away or get rid of them. And right. everybody in the room is like, well, don't do that. And encouraged him to, to put the CD set together. And, yeah. and then it kind of evolved from there. It was just uh, a really fun project uh, to work on and, and to put together and, and to see it come to life. No, that's great. Uh, I've included the links to where you can purchase these items in the description of this video. So be sure to check those out. I'll also be posting them on socials today. Super easy process and a perfect gift uh, for any Packers fan this year, obviously with the holidays around the corner. Uh, sticking with that nine, 1967 season, I've got a question for you, Jerry. Obviously, 67 was a historic season. Forever will be remembered in sports history. What sparked your notion to do the audio set and photo booklet about this specific season? I think the fact that it was a third consecutive title was the biggest thing. No one had ever done that. And, you you know, everybody's shooting at you. Everybody's planning their season for you. Yep. So it's a very difficult thing to win two in a row or three in a row. It's almost impossible. So we had the wonder man named Lombardi. And he had an incredible will, incredible fire, burn, hunger, want, need. And uh, the season started off a little slow and it wasn't all all that much, but it turned out to be another great season. And uh, we're awful proud of that three in a row figure. Yep. No, that's that's great. Uh, the Ice Bowl, everyone remembers Bart Starr's game-winning quarterback sneak. But something that doesn't get talked about as much is the impact Donnie Anderson had on that game, and specifically the final drive. Uh, 18 carries for 35 yards, four catches for 44 yards. Two plays before Bart Starr's quarterback sneak, Donnie claims that he thinks he actually scored, but it was ruled short of the goal line. Um, <laughs> according to Coach Lombardi, he said, well, it looks like they took that one away from you, young man. Could you talk about those final three plays, the Anderson run that came short, the Anderson run where he slipped, and then Bart sneaking in to, to win the game? Yeah, we did, Donnie did try a couple dives, and he really he was slipping and sliding a little bit, so he was his chest was about a foot and a half off the turf when he got to the line of scrimmage, so uh, you can see how the refs might, might have missed it. Yeah. But uh, the, the quarterback sneak was something that I suggested in Thursday film. Yep. We were always looking at the opponent on Thursdays and spent a couple hours on the film. And I noticed that Jethro Pugh was much higher than Bob Lilly on the other side. 
So I uh, watched three films, and you you don't make casual conversation with Coach Lombardi. You better have something to say or keep your mouth shut. And I said, uh, Coach, I think we can wedge Pew. What? And he barks at me like a, you know, and uh, I, I think we can wedge Pew if we have to. He said, run that back. Run that back. That's right. Put in a wedge on Pew. So I took a deep sigh and thought my that was over. You know, you never know if you're going to need it, if the situation arises or where we are or how we are. But it came up that we were on about the one yard line. And uh, I had to believe I suggested it to Bart. And I had to believe that I could block Jethro. And Jethro came up just like he had in the two previous games. And we went into the end zone and probably the greatest sight I had in my professional football career was turning around. I was on the ground and Jethro was probably three yards back into the end zone. Yep. And I turned around and Bart was laying just across the end zone. And I sighed a great big sigh of relief and went, whew, we got it done. We got it done. And so then the celebration began. Yes, it did. No, that's, uh, that's awesome. Um, Jerry and Daniel and Diana, I'm so thankful. I have an awesome dad who raised me to be a Packers fan. He's from La Crosse, Wisconsin. Thankfully, okay. he, right? Thankfully, he brought me and my little sister along to meet the one and only Ray Nitschke back when I was a young and yeah. uh, I'm, I'm gonna pull up a picture here. So there we go. Oh, nice. Isn't this picture just awesome? Nice. Myself, my little sister, my dad, meet Ray Nitschke. It was just an awesome cool. time for my dad. I obviously beautiful it. picture. Yeah, you know, Rob, uh, that, that, that is that, that reminds beautiful me of something. picture. Ray was a really interesting guy. He uh, was a uh, lost his mom and dad when he was pretty young, so his brothers kind of raised him in a difficult atmosphere. And Ray was a, a little wild and maybe drank a little bit more than he should on occasion. But we had a chat about it one evening and had a long chat about it. And uh, Ray quit drinking. And he was a, he was a total opposite human being. He could be really obnoxious when he was drinking. But when he was sober, he was polite and he was thoughtful and he was kind and he was sharing. And I went to Ray before the game started, the last item of the day was to have Ray slap my shoulder pads and slap me up against the ears and get me ready to play. Yep. And I would slap his shoulder pads and he'd say, Jerry, don't hit my ears. I don't like that. <laughs> so that, that, was a, that was a ritual that we had before the game started. That's perfect. I was going to ask you a, a story for Ray, but that is just perfect. Uh, Daniel, go ahead. What, what's that remind you of? Yeah, you know, I've grown up with Lombardi and with my dad and his stories, and there's so much to share. One of the things he told me one time was how important Lombardi emphasized to his players the importance of the fans and treating the fans with love and respect. And just the way, Dad, we talked one time about signing those footballs, and somebody had come along and said that, you know, maybe uh, Lombardi hadn't signed them. Maybe he had had a proxy sign them. And you got upset and you told me the story about how, you know, he made you guys sign those balls. And they're all 100 percent, you know, uh, truly signed. Do you remember signing those balls with the other teammates in the locker room? Absolutely, Dan. There, there was a, a uh, hamper that we put our towels and dirty clothes in and it was probably like four by four or something like that ac across the top, but they had a uh, top for it that held the footballs. Okay. And there would be 10, 12, 15 footballs every time we came in there. So before we got dressed or before we did anything, we signed the balls and coach Lombardi signed the balls and everybody that was asked to sign them, signed them it was a it was a a, a a wonderful thing to have the uh, the fans want your autograph we looked at it as a 
a compliment as something very yeah. sweet between us and the fans. Right. And we all kind of competed a little bit who could have the best autograph. And Nitschke <laughs> wrote like a poet. He wrote a, had a beautiful hand and a beautiful autograph. He does. And I could tell Ray's autograph anywhere. But it was important to us, and we took it so. No, that's awesome. Uh, Daniel, great, yeah. great story to bring that up. Go ahead, Diane, if you got something. Well, I was just going to say, I, I have a little different, uh, always a little different take on it. But uh, as, a, uh, as a child, uh, I found him terrifying. <laughs> that, that booming voice, and he was the really? size of a giant. And he uh, was absolutely terrifying, but just a teddy bear. Just Not a, only as a child, giant, but... as an adult. Too. Yeah. <laughs> Right. You're right. As an adult, too. You're right. Uh, was, even as was, you're grown. Yeah. No, I get uh, this. He was massive. Hey, could I, Rob, could I play a real quick intro of these CDs? I want you to hear oh, Dad introduce the CDs. I would love that. Yes, of course. Please see if do. you can hear this okay. Here we go. Yep. The Green Bay Packers began the 1967 season, a veteran championship team. No team in the modern era of pro football had ever won three world championships in a row. Lombardi billed the 1967 season as the ultimate challenge for his four-time world championship team. Hi, I'm Jerry Kramer. I played offensive guard for the Green Bay Packers for 11 years, primarily in the 60s. In 1967, the late author Dick Schaap and I sat down to write a book called Instant Replay. I didn't know a great deal about writing books. Dick suggested that we use a tape recorder. And I record all my thoughts, my emotions, my observations, my thoughts about the game, the team, the players, and what happened on the field. And that he would transcribe those tapes and organize them into a book. So during that season, I carried a tape recorder with me wherever I went. Toward the end of the season, I took the tape recorder into the locker room into the Super Bowl, into some places where it had never been before. And I then put them into a place where they had never been before, in the corner of my garage for almost 40 years. Recently, I dug the tapes out, and I would like to share them with you and some recent conversations I had with my teammates from that 1967 season. The Packers man. So Dad then goes on to interview... Uh, Bart Starr, Paul Horning, Max McGee, Zeke, Chuck Mercine. And, you know, this was something Dad and Diane worked on together, and I wasn't really a part of it. Diane, talk to us a little bit about sitting around that dining room table, and how did you guys produce it? Take us from A to Z. Well, um, you know, we went and had access to all of the uh, digital files from the library went to the library and they graciously allowed us to you know get all of the uh, old photos and we would sit there and go through the photos and then go through the tapes and you know those are the actual you're hearing dad you're you know the actual it's not uh dubbed or edited or reenacted you'll hear someone throwing up and you'll hear a toilet flushing i mean it's live at that time, it's exactly what was uh, happening, as, as you said, Dad. And um, so we had a lot to go through, a lot of edits and left in, obviously, the, uh, the things that made it so authentic. But um, and, and then the photo book, too, trying to choose from, uh, you know, hundreds of just amazing, amazing photos. And I think we picked the best ones that are in that booklet and the and the. Uh, I think the best of the, the cuts are in the CD. It just was uh, just a, a kind of a stolen moment in time to be able right. to have those tapes. Yep. Uh, how long did it take you guys to put it all together? How long was it, Dad? Maybe. I think it was pretty much the season. We okay. started uh, early and talked to a tremendous number of the guys. I think Paul and Max and Bart and yeah. Jimmy and Fuzzy and you know pretty much the whole team one way or another and it it couldn't end until after the Super Bowl yep. and yeah. so it ended in uh, Florida after Super Bowl two and it ended with Coach Lombardi I 
was working on the book and on like about Thursday of the week, uh, Coach Lombardi was giving us a, a, a list of things we were going to do for the day or the rest of the week. And he went through the whole list and then he started to walk away from the podium and he walked about 15 or 20 steps. Then he stopped, thought a little bit and walked back to the podium. And he said, and uh, this may be our last time together. Okay. And I looked at some of the guys and what is that? It can only mean one thing that it's our last time together. Coach is going to retire or maybe we're going to retire or something, but this will be the last time we'll all be together. So at halftime in the Super Bowl, I suggested to Bob Skaronsky and Willie Davis, who were our team captains, that they carry Coach off the field, that it would be appropriate for his final game to have his men, his team, carry him off the field. And so they thought that was a great idea. And so we get down to the ball game and the game ends and I'm standing next to Forrest Gregg and uh, Coach Lombardi was, we were close to Coach Lombardi and he starts to walk out on the field. So he takes, you know, he's 10, 15 yards now and uh, Willie and Bob are not anywhere to be found. So Forrest says, Jerry, let's get him. Let's get him now. So we ran out and put him on our shoulders and carried him into the middle of the field. And it was a wonderful moment for all of us. No, that's great. That's awesome. Um, anything else you guys want to touch on before we close it down here? Oh, just appreciate your time and your interest. You know, I've been running dad's Facebook page for 10 years and it's kind of my mission to keep the memory of Lombardi's Packers alive. Yep. So I want to introduce it to these new kids that maybe kind of don't even remember Brett Favre, you know, right. but uh, <laughs> thank you for having the interest and, and the love for Ray Nitschke and Jerry Kramer and Paul Horning. And let's spread that word. Yes, let's do yeah. that. So this was just awesome. As I said earlier, I've included the links in the description of this video so you can buy the two CD set for $30 and the photo booklet for $10. Just an awesome gift for any Packers fan. Daniel, thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. Diana, it was great to have you on as well. My pleasure. Great. Thanks again. Jerry, it was an honor speaking with you, and thank you as well for coming on. One last thought. Yep. All the rings, all the money, all the color, all the display, they linger in the memory for a short time or soon, and are soon gone. But the will to win, the will to excel, these are the things that endure. And these are the things that are so much more important than any of the events that occasion them. So develop in you the will to win, the will to excel. Perfectly said, Jerry. Thanks so much. Uh, this welcome. was my pleasure for all you guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, that does it for us. This was amazing. As I said, check out the links in the description to get your photo book and CD set. You will love it. Thanks, everyone, for watching. And Thank I will you. catch you guys later. Thank you. Go back, Go. Go Pack Go.